Welcome to the Tour Life Podcast from Well Better Best. I'm Janine, your host, integrative nutrition health coach and personal trainer. In the past 10 years, I've had the privilege of meeting some of the most interesting and hardworking professionals in the music industry. Whether you are a fan of live music or someone who actually puts on the shows, you'll find some great stories, advice, and encouragement to live a happier, healthier life doing what you love. Today's guest is a Chicago MC who, through various collaborations with people like Taylor Bennett and the Elmais, gained praise around the city, eventually being voted second best rapper in the city by the Chicago Reader in 2016. You can find him on Instagram at richjones underscore music. Here is my conversation with the refreshingly chill and optimistic Rich Jones. Hey, Rich. How's it going? Great. How are you? I'm doing really well, you know, just eating tacos, hanging out, Sick. being really super healthy, of course. That no. sounds great. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. I'm I'm getting love done by a cat, so I also feel like I'm being very healthy. Oh, yeah. We all mental, need some. Mental healthy. Right. Some emotional wellness. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. So it's been a few years. I met you when I was working at Vocalo and WBZ. I was at North Coast. Yeah, at North Coast. And I remember I FaceTimed you once randomly when I was with a friend. <laughs> <laughs> so sure. what? Uh, how do you get into music? You've been doing lots of really cool stuff. I've been following, obviously. So tell me. Uh, like the beginning? Yeah, just like really, you know, just really quickly. Like how did you, since I guess, yeah. let's say um, high school I mean, I, and then I got into, I got into music, um... I mean, from from a young age, I I, you know, I was very taken by by rap music and hip hop music when I was uh, really young, um, and um, in high school is when I started being able to actually start make my first recordings and to start, you know, trying to make my own material, um, and so that, you know that was that was you know rudimentary, but yeah, that's kind of the 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 kind of the earliest period. Um, of trying to to figure out how to how to make songs and you know make them sound okay and like you know also learning to work with people uh, for the first time especially just because you know I you know it was such a small number of people that I knew that were doing it at least you know that were my age and that, that I could like work with so you know you were kind of uh, working with with who was around and you know I, I met some really great early collaborators that way and um you know a bunch of them are still making music or are doing various things in music yeah i love that i see that you have you do tons of collabs like mm-hmm. there, you have a lot of friends yeah, so fun. how how do you how do you build those relationships um i mean obviously being around people is is a really great way to become friends with them um you know proximity to where you live, uh, running into people. I, I get around the city pretty frequently, um, pretty much weekly. I'm, I'm driving all over the place. And um, so I just happen to run into a lot of people. So it's kind of like the city at certain points can just kind of feel like a big water cooler chat, which is pretty, it's pretty great. You know, you catch up with a bunch of people or like if someone's in a business, you can stop by and, and chat with them and, you know, kind of catch up while they're working and then I'm technically working. Um, but um, yeah, no, it's it's definitely, you know, a, a really, you know, wonderful, wonderful. And, and I think, you know, one that kind of works, especially for me and how I live. I don't I know everyone doesn't have the time to to move around as much as I do. So I think people sometimes get into just like the, the circles of people that are around them in their proximity. Um, as we were saying uh, a second ago, too, just like with the Internet being um, a tool to kind of, you know, passively be involved in people's lives and to um be able to to stay in touch with them and or you know passively or as, as passive as you want it to be it could be as simple as seeing a status like oh that's what that's what they're up to or you know genuinely staying in touch messaging calling you know like phone phones are great um you know i i love to to check up on and and keep tabs on on people from all over the country and so you know i think with with that those sort of tools at my disposal it's uh it's something where i, I you know i'm able to i guess 
cultivate and maintain it that way. But yeah, you know, again, it's as with any good friendship, I'd, I'd like to think it's mostly organic, which is good. So. Yeah. So is music the, your, your main gig? I mean, it, it seems like it, but, but I don't know what other stuff do you do? Anything? Else? Uh, the main other thing that I do is I do, um, street marketing or retail marketing for different clients. Um, you know, either placing things kind of in public spaces, um, you know, where people might be walking or, you know, pat driving by and then also putting them in like retail locations, like depending on the client, like a record store or restaurants or clothing stores, you know, kind of wherever that sort of material might live. Um, and that's, that's why I'm able to move around the way I do is because of that sort of work. And like, you know, on the one hand, it, it can take up a little chunk of my time, but again, I, I feel strongly that, that, that sort of gig has only made it possible for me to be even more aware about what's happening kind of in a larger area than just where I live or like kind of places that I would more naturally frequent, which I think is good. Um, so, and then, you know, on top of that, you know, that to, to the earlier point of making friends, you know, I just meet so many people and it's, it's kind of a really interesting way to kind of just build a network that way to you know, say, so you don't never really feel like out, totally out of place, you know? Um, that sounds really cool. Yeah. Um, so, so you've been touring and you're getting ready for tour. So I'm actually really interested in hearing about how you do that. How do you prep for when you go on like on the road for a week or two or however long, what's the longest you've gone out? What do you do? Uh, I mean, the longest that I've ever left and kind of gone place to place to place was like 17, 18 days. And that was the very first time I went on tour with somebody um and then um by myself th this is the longest trip i've ever taken where i'm the sole person traveling um so i've never i've never done this before um usually i've had people either like you know folks that have been working with me in like a management capacity or like other artists that i'm traveling with go with me but uh this time around it just worked out that i just uh felt like I could, I could do it myself. So, um, it'll, it'll definitely be a new, a new experience. Um, I think, you know, the, the plus side though, everywhere I'm going, I've met people and I, you know, it's not, there, there's not really going to be a, I don't know anyone here. Cause you know, I, I, you know, I've said this sort of thing before, but when you go places where you don't know anybody or they don't know you, you can really be a ghost or just complete wallpaper to other people and that that's not like a great feeling so luckily anywhere I'm going I at least have like some pretty pretty good friends or acquaintances that um I can you know rely on for some level of camaraderie and cheer <laughs> and gen or general excitement that you know you're there because otherwise it's just like who the fuck are you you know um I've, I've unfortunately seen both sides of that <laughs> So, um, two, a couple questions. So one, I want to know, um, tell me about an experience like that, just how, how it feels when, when it is kind of random and how you even end up in a situation like that. And then two, how, um, how do you set up and decide where you're going to go? Is it because you know people and then yeah. that helps you decide or how does it work? I mean, well, to answer the first question, I mean, an example that wasn't so great. I don't know. I don't want to like. I don't want to dunk on anybody because people, you know, they're, people are nice enough to book you and it doesn't always work out and you just kind of got to chalk it up to the game. But there, there was definitely one, one show last year. I won't say where or the when or anything, but, um, just no one was there and it was a little frustrating. And one of the people kind of just yelled out, Hey man, it's great practice. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I kind of just, it, I, I just had to really hold it in. Cause again, I don't, I don't like to be rude to people that I, I have asked me to be there or are allowing me to be there. Cause that's really it. If you don't know anybody like, you know, who's going to give you the green light or who's going to actually give a shit enough to do it. So I don't know. You don't, again, I'm not trying to like speak ill, but that definitely hit a bad chord. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is, this is, you know, the, I, I usually like to do this in front of people. <laughs> um, in terms of booking the shows, I I guess right now it's just been like this this upcoming tour tomorrow has just been me and 
you know, this summer I, I had a, this spring into summer, I had a couple of drives that were kind of in like the six to eight hour range. And I just thought I've done this drive, uh, you know, multiple times now this, this year. And, you know, if you, if you look at it in segments, it would be pretty easy to put something, you know, even something really chill, like a chill number. I'm doing, I'm doing five shows. It's great. Um, just even just having that for 10 days, a couple days off. Cause that's another thing too, is I, I, I generally have, have tried to be pretty zealous about trying to fill up dates and it hasn't always worked, but, um, like the last tour we did last year, that was like 22 days. And oh, I guess that was the longest, yeah, 22 days and 20 shows. And that was so tiring. Like I just, I was done by the end. I was so happy to be home. Um, and you know, this is definitely a way more scaled back. I think, I think I'm, I've, I've bitten off exactly what I can chew. Um, you know, both in terms of like, you know, what I can afford to, to, to spend in terms of like funding the venture. Cause you got, you know, I don't have a car, so I have to rent a car, you know, oh, we need merch. Okay. I need to get some merch because, you know, like stuff like that, you're leaving money on the table if you don't bring something to have someone remember you by. So I'm, I'm really lucky that I have a couple of things that I'm going to have for people that, that see me and if they like it, cool. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, a lot of it really is just networks. I mean, when I was booking hip hop shows in Chicago, that was a really easy thing to kind of be like, Hey, I really, you know, I really like you. I'd like to bring you to Chicago or, or just however it would come up. Um, and you know, that would be something to offer somebody in another place. Cause you know, Chicago is a major market. It can be kind of tough to break in if you're not, you know, at a certain level. And luckily, you know, I've been in a spot where I, I kind of am connected to several communities and kind of am abreast of, you know, places that people can do it, you know, it doesn't always work out, but the least you can do is like make the introduction and see what can happen. Um, so yeah. Um, you know, now, now that I no longer do that, it's kind of more, you know, linking with the people that I do know are throwing shows. Cause I'm kind of taking a semi-permanent break from that. Um, cause I want to focus on my, my music more so than event production, but they, you know, never, never say never. I do enjoy it a little bit. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that, that's basically how the the tour comes together. That was, you know, just maintaining the the relationships either through, you know, as I said, phone calls, messaging, texting, whatever, you know, however people connect these days. And then um, if they come to Chicago, you know, I try to I try to take care of or host people that that you know take care and host me, you know, because we fuck with each other. And you know, it's it's nice, you know, it's it's nice to, again to kind of feel familiar to have kind of a familial aspect when you're you're elsewhere. You know, like New York's really dope because a lot of my friends from here or friends from my life have moved there. So it's like, you know, that's a big place, but I, I don't ever feel small. I don't, you know, I don't feel like insignificant or anything. You know, I don't, I don't feel overwhelmed, which is really, I'm really grateful and appreciative of. Yeah. That sounds, it's, it sounds like relationships and friends are really what help people get there. And I've talked to a lot of people who I've been friends with and a lot of the people who've come in on the podcast is are really friends of friends and, you know, people that I've met and, and I was at a show, when was it on Sunday? Um, and, you know, even just like introducing myself they're they like know what I'm up to because of other friends. So mm -hmm. I, so I can totally see how that would make things definitely more, more comfortable and more feasible, especially when you're, you're going to places that you're not all the time. Right. right. Yeah. So, so do you have uh, places to crash in most of these cities? Uh, so far, I'm feeling feeling pretty confident. The only question marks tomorrow, but I I have a hunch I'll be okay. Um, I've I've slept in cars before. <laughs> um, so you know if that's if that's the route, whatever. I'll I'll figure it out. I I'm really good at sleeping anywhere. It's it's kind of a skill. I uh, you know I've I've slept. I slept in a bus terminal once and that was, that was not optimal, but there was nothing else to do. It was like a winter, winter late night in Memphis at the Greyhound station. And I just had to find a corner cause my bus got canceled. And then that turned into a whole nother saga. Um, but <laughs> tell me, uh, yeah. Uh, essentially I, I had gone down to Austin, Texas and it was, um, like a 30 hour bus ride to Austin. So that was pretty long to begin with. Get there. I do a show. I hang out a little bit and then I take the bus back. And then, um, 
you know, everything's pretty cool until, you know, we get to Dallas and then like, uh, out of nowhere, like half like a federal prison, like gets on the bus. Cause they'll give like, you know, like you, you can transport yourself if you're like a low enough, I guess level of security or some shit. So, you know, all of a sudden a bunch of dudes, you know, get on this. I'm like, Oh man, like, you know, that's cool. People live their lives. People make mistakes, but also it's, you know, it's not my typical crowd really. Um, and, uh, then, you know, we, we, we finally get to Memphis and I'm like, all right, cool. It's the home stretch, 10 hours to go. Great. And then as soon as, uh, as soon as I sit down to eat a sandwich that I'd ordered, they announced that all the buses are canceled because of ice and I'm just freaking out because the next day my friends have a release show and I really want to get there. I really want to be there for my, 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 my friends. And I just, uh, I just kind of was like, all right, well, you know, hopefully, hopefully things work out in the morning and I'll get in the evening and I'll drop my shit and I'll go to the show. And, uh, so the bus at 10 AM leaves the station and we get, about three hours out it takes it takes three hours to go about an hour out because of how bad the roads are and basically they're like they pull over and we're we're sitting in this gas station parking lot for like i think an hour hour and a half and then they say hey we can we can't go any further there's another bus of passengers going to chicago as well between the two of y'all pick a roommate um and you know i was I was just like, all right, well, this, this isn't going well. Um, and, uh, the guy that I've been talking to in the Greyhound station, he, he's like, do you want a room? And I said, yeah, sure. That sounds good. Um, let me go back to the room and, and we're hanging out. And, um, at some point he's just like, you know, Hey, you want to get some girls? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, Oh, I'm talking to someone online right now. And uh, I said, well, like a dating app or something. He's like, oh, no, no, back pages, man, escorts. And I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm I'm really OK, man. I, I appreciate the offer. But no, I, I don't I don't I don't you know, that's not not for me. And uh, he just <laughs> he just gets very blunt and says, I got to level with you, man. I just got out. And I'm like, oh, no. So I got a, a horny ex-convict as my roommate in Blytheville, Arkansas at the, the Deerfield Inn motel. And it, it's just, ugh. It, I, I, you know, I made it through the night. Okay. But it was definitely, it was definitely stressful. Um, easily the worst voyage of my life. It took 60 hours to get home. And yeah, like the, 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 the least I could do after like resting for like 30 minutes was like, I'm just going to go get drunk. This, this is just too much. <laughs> that is so wild. Yeah, was, so was you were in crazy. Memphis when that happened and then just getting from Memphis to Chicago. Was yeah. It was just all part. transfers. Like, mm -hmm. it, like it, this, this shit was so stupid. Like looking back, I'm like, I could have just bought a plane ticket for the same amount as the bus. For some reason, I thought this was the better option, like a fucking dope. I was just, oh, oh, that happens though. Like sometimes, oh. like you think you're you, you think you're making the right de decision, and then you're like, you know, sometimes the convenience factor, it's worth it. But and there was zero convenience factor. I don't. I don't. Maybe it's because no. I, I mean, the know. convenience factor of like just taking a plane would have been worth it. <laughs> oh, total. Oh my God. Yeah. No. That that was that was like definitely the lesson because you know I to date part of, part of what it made it sort of attractive is like I driven to Austin. I think a couple of times by that point just over the years and like so it was you know that was a drive I was familiar with and I thought you know by bus it can't be that bad and I don't even have to do the driving I just get to hang so wrong it was so uncomfortable it was oh it was definitely I mean I'm glad I went through it I'm glad I made it through but my god never again uh lessons and it's funny because I actually had a really bad trip on my way back from Memphis as well. So a few years back, I went to Memphis on, on a motorcycle. So I was on a road king and it wasn't like, motorcycle? like just like a, like it was like a big Harley. So it was like kind of comfortable, but it wasn't like still like that comfortable because it was kind of, it was a far ride, but it was in April. And so we go and we go to Memphis and then Nashville and then we head back. So right past Louisville, we end up like it just got really cold yeah. and it and it wasn't cold the entire time but right when we got there it started getting cold and then we're like in southern indiana and it was like freezing and then there was like ice rain and i literally like i i cried 
and I was trying to be tough like the entire time, <laughs> but we finally get off at a gas station and we're not that far. We're, we had been, we're like probably like an hour and a half from home at this point. Um, and we had already gone through all this awful weather and just like the wind hitting you is like, and I didn't have like full leather or anything, you know? So it was just like, oh, it was so bad. And then wind, we, my, my least favorite element, I hate oh, wind. Oh my gosh. Wind not, with not rain. A, continue. Sorry. And no cold wind with rain. And then I, we stopped at a gas station finally. And I like, I had tears just streaming down my eyes. And the whole time I was trying to be like tough. I just couldn't handle it. So, yeah. So it's funny that you had a terrible trip from Memphis. And like, uh, yeah, me too. I'd like to think the next time I go will be the best experience of my life. That's that's what I'm banking on. And, you know, Godspeed to that dream. I hope I hope it comes true. I you know, I you know, you never know. I, uh, I, I learned a long time ago, you know, people definitely make the place like places exist places, you know, it's. it's you know, how you feel or how, how connected or not connected you feel, you know, if you've got someone there, it's immediately more welcoming and hospitable than not. Cause other, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a very different animal. You don't know where to go. I remember the first time I went overseas when I was in college, I, I remember just feeling so out of place, like walking like two blocks from where we were staying for the, the term or whatever, and just being completely like freaked out. It was like, I felt like, I felt like, a space person, like an astronaut or something that like was like untethered. And I was like, if I go further, I could die, you know? Um, but anyways. Oh man. So have you gone overseas, um, since like for, for music or no? Um, I haven't, I'm going to go back to Europe in November. I believe at the very least I'm going to record and, you know, hopefully meet some new, new friends and all that. I, I kind of want to, check the temperature and see what's, see what's going on out there. Um, and then I have some other countries. Um, I'm going to visit outside of London. Um, I'm going to try to visit Amsterdam and then hope I have a relative who lives in, uh, Barcelona, my cousin. And, uh, so hopefully I'll get to, to see his life there. He's lived there for like 15 years and I've never visited him. So I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that. It'd be good to, to kind of get a sense of his life and what he's doing. And then, uh, following that i'll do a couple of weeks in italy with some friends um because they're, they're doing an art show uh, my my friend the artist mark brown he uh, he did the cover for my my project pigeons and waffles um which is coming up on five years next year which fucks my head up um but yeah he uh, him and my friend delore they're they're doing the show and i think we're gonna do a music showcase or show the week prior to the art show which you know that would be cool i mean even if i just do one show and then kind of adventure and meet people that's that's it's time well spent i think in a lot of ways plus like you know at this point i know how to live relatively cheaply <laughs> you know and in, in terms of like basic necessities or like kind of like i, I hope i'd hope to i'd like to think i'm like okay at budgeting to make sure i don't have to like sell my pants or something so when did you learn uh, to figure that out? Because I'm sure you didn't know exactly how to manage that. At it's first. an ongoing process. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you think you have it all figured out and then something just comes out of left field that, that, you know, can clean you out or just like greatly lessen how much you have going into something, you know, and it just, you just never know what to expect. That's why you just try to, to prepare as best as possible in terms of like, you know, your finances and, and kind of just thinking, I mean, like the fact that i am almost positive i do not have to spend a dime on lodging save so much money like that's easily a couple hundred dollars two three hundred bucks right there um for you know me doing that and that's you know just considering one one day in each of those places and i'm doing four in new york or five in new york which you know that can be a real bear luckily i, I have a lot of people that you know host me and, and let me stay with them and um so that you know that's nice um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something where, you know, as, you know, there, there, as I said, there's expenses, so you have to, to afford those and, and then kind of also figure out like how lavish you're gonna, you're gonna live, which, you know, luckily I, I'm not, I'm not too picky. I don't, I don't know. I don't need like, for, was it Ferrero Rocher chocolates or like any sort of like fancy shit. Um, <laughs> those are know. my favorite i love yeah they're, you know they're good but they're i only good. get the little three packs and only nice. only so often you know oh, every now and again uh, yeah, you know a, a, nice, a nice little treat you know 
Yeah, they're nice and special. Hell yeah. Oh, man. So that's so cool. So you have um, a, some really cool music that has come out. And I've, I've been listening to it. I actually was playing it in my classroom recently. I like, saw that. That was yeah, so like sweet. The other day. <laughs> that was the coolest thing ever. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> oh, of course. It's fun. I like I like playing music. It's it's funny. I joked around with them. I'm like, you know, I might start making music over the summer because like I'm standing here with my computer and I kind of like it. So. Yeah, fuck around. Why not? <laughs> um, but no, but it's it's really cool. And you have a lot of um, you have a, a really big range, which I think is really cool. So where do, where does that come from? Is it just from all the different scenes that you're into, or what? Yeah, I'd say. Um, I mean, at the heart of it all is is hip hop. That's what I started making. So I think, by and by, by heart of it, I mean like the 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 nucleus of my skill set and how I guess how like I can sometimes initially relate to production or music that's being presented to me to write. Um, you know, I definitely use tools that come from that to make things happen. Like you know, I can you know, freestyle a verse or like, you know, try out different words to see how they sound, um, you know, on a beat or like on, on some music that someone's playing and, you know, experiment with it. I, I'm really lucky to have some spaces that I, I work out of and, and some people that, that work with me that allow me the time um, to, to just kind of do what I need to do to get the record the way I want it, which is really, really helpful. Um, and yeah, I, I think, you know, that said, for me, that just means I, I like to experiment, you don't just want to make the same thing every time. And, you know, so obviously, I can use those techniques to get something started. But then from there, I'm not scared to carry it to a different place or kind of, you know, I, you know, obviously, everyone's borrowing from somebody in some way. But, you know, I'd like to think at least, you know, the, the litmus for me is like, I didn't think I was capable of doing that or like, wow, like, I, you know, I, th there's been a couple of songs from this past year of recording that like, you know, I'm not going to lie, not to sound like a psycho or anything, but like, I'll listen to it for a few hours straight after just to be like, damn, like, where, what part of me made this and like kind of assess like what, what went into just kind of the whole thing. And I mean, and that's, that's not even to discount, you know, the, the producer side of it. Cause obviously like I'm really lucky to work with people who give me good input um, and who also are able to kind of take my ideas and translate them. Cause I don't, I don't produce. I just kind of tell people suggestions if I have them and then otherwise just try to get out the way and, and let people do what, what they need to do to, to be the best them while we're working together. Yeah, I love that. I, I think it's it's really interesting to see just kind of how things evolve and how things change. Um, how do you notice since you listen to to your stuff, obviously, do you see that you've transitioned in a way um, and just the way that you express yourself and has music helped you express yourself better over the years? I, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think there will, you know, I think a big, so a great example, when I was, when I was in high school, I had a teacher and he would always ask that I, I write with more precision, that I was more to the point, more succinct with, with my thoughts. And, um, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't love it. Cause you know, I, I was enjoying using words and, and, you know, use, I mean, as, as much as can be enjoyed from, from writing an academic paper in high school. Um, but yeah, I feel like was as I've moved into working in other genres or other writing styles, it's been really cool to see how um, you know, those styles call for brevity. You know, like for instance, like if I'm doing like a like let's say your average rap verse is 16 lines or 16 bars or whatever. Um, you know, if you compare that to like, you know, just singing something versus, you know, Ba 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 ba. You know, a lot of like words at once. You can really draw it out. You don't. You don't have to say a ton. But then the onus is on you to make sure what you're saying is impactful. To make sure that it is something that isn't just kind of empty language. Um, you know, because you know you're you've you've only you've you've chosen your game. You're gonna go with less is more. But make sure that that more is like the most. <laughs> um, so you know, I. I feel like that's been a really healthy and wonderful lesson for me is kind of to then figure out how to blend those two 
mentalities together for like a certain section. I'm going to maybe pepper it with a bunch of things and then kind of take it back. And I don't know to try, try to present things in a way that don't tire the listener's ear, that don't tire my ear, that keep me engaged and feeling like the song has evolved in a way that's interesting. And, and I think is, is to its highest potential. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, that's really, it's, it's really a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds like it can be pretty therapeutic, huh? Oh, totally. Oh, man, breathing and shit, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So what's something that music has helped you get through? Uh, all sorts of shit. <laughs> uh, heartbreak, financial issues, uh, interpersonal problems with, with friends and family. I don't know. It's, it's been a good, a good friend a good a good thing to be able to turn to and have be a part of what I do. I think you know, as I've gotten older, it's been in some ways less about what I'm creating and kind of more what I'm taking in when I'm when I'm not working. I feel like there's kind of I don't want to say a total separation of church and state. Just the way the way I work is 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 different than I did last year and different than the year before that in a lot of very key ways. Like I'll, I'll go to producers houses or studios and like we'll work on something, but like outside of that, I'm not doing a necessarily a ton of work around the actual art as much as maybe thinking about the things attached to it. I think that's, that's kind of where my head's at is if I'm not in the studio, I'm kind of going to be thinking about like, other things that you can attach to it, whether it's, you know, just like taking a dope photo or something or uh, making like a video piece for something. I don't know. I, I'm just trying to figure out ways to get people to engage with what I'm doing. And like, I think as of right now, especially, I, I went super hard for a few years where it was like almost every week or like every two or three weeks, just going in there and knocking out, you know, anywhere from like two to three or four songs each time so you know you do three songs a week that shit adds up and you know i've got a nice reservoir of records to choose from and i'm really happy that that was a period of, of what i'm doing but yeah right right now i think now i'm kind of more creating in the sense of finding ways to present what i'm doing or try to maybe work with people that can help me kind of really put it in the best possible light just because yeah I, you know we're we're in such a we're in an era where, you know, there's not a label doing it for you. There's not like an A&R who's like putting together the team for you. You know, you're everything or whoever you, you know, you involve with your shit. You know, you kind of have to call the call the game. And uh, so, yeah, I think um, I'm, I'm kind of getting into and, and really enjoying just finding different ways to present my story or what I'm trying to accomplish or the art that I'm making, um, you know, whether that's like doing like a live stream or like, um, you know, finding people that want to make graphics to pair with the music, to show people clips of the music, just finding any way to entice them. I remember years ago, I mean, algorithms change and shit, but I remember there was like a, a Facebook ad, uh, post that I did for a record I, I dropped called devotion. And just that one little section, like people like, you know, for me, at least at the time, especially like they kind of lost their shit and they were like, dude, this is sweet. And it was just from like, like when's the real thing dropping? And that's kind of when I started to get a better sense of like how to potentially create excitement or kind of create some sort of anticipation for what you're doing um, versus just throwing it out there. Be like, hey, hope you like it. You know, that's uh, there's 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 always like, I think a way to, to, to give yourself the amount of time you need to, to make it be as proper as it needs to be. I know that's like, also that pursuit is, has definitely slowed me down sometimes in terms of maybe getting some product out. But, um, you know, for the most part, it's, you know, you kind of keep a, a general range of when you want something to arrive and, um, you know, ho hopefully the plan doesn't change too much. Yeah. So how do you get, um, not caught up in, the planning and in the business side of things so that you can stay doing what you love and keep it from getting too heavy. It's tough. I, you know, I, I've talked to certain people about it and they've referenced people that like you would be like, Oh yeah, that person's killing it or whatever. But it, from what I can tell, I'm not alone in this kind of like discombobulated kind of juggling act that's, that's going on. And, uh, you know, so that's, I guess, sort of heartening. You know, it's like even the, even the person that you think is like set up in a way that, that allows them to, to be considered in a certain light, you know, they're dealing with 
the strain of of how they get shit done too. So you know, I I, I guess that's kind of nice. But like also, you know, I, I I guess the where 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 I struggle is I think sometimes maybe I work a little harder than I have to, not as smart as I have to. But that said, I I, I feel like part of that is kind of a backlash to the whole work smart, not hard mentality. Because I think a lot of people miss represent what that means or misunderstand what that means where it's like oh i don't have to work hard no you definitely have to work hard like you there's work is part of this um you know if you're one of those people that's lucky enough to have like a financier or like some sort of patron that'll kind of like allow you to have certain niceties in life god bless like go crazy but like it doesn't mean that you can just chill like no like in the grand scheme you should have something to show for that sort of in, you know faith and in, uh, investment or whatever yeah, it's like there's there's a lot of stuff that has to happen in order for anything to show up. There's a thing that happens to me personally, and I've I hadn't really done a creative thing until recently. And there's a thing that happened to, that started happening to me where I started put, putting a lot of pressure on what I was doing, and it started to take the love of the creative side out because I felt like I was putting I was just. I was just like putting too much pressure on it. Like I needed it to work out or happen or make something happen. Do you ever run into those feelings? And what do you do to kind of get yourself back into the love of things? Freakouts? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that happens. I I don't know, man. It's It's a bipolar ass life. Like I swear one week it's just like, fuck this. The next week it's just like, I could not picture myself doing anything else. So, you know, I think as long as the, the main... I guess uh, mission statement remains the same or, or generally is in the ballpark or you, or at least you know what it is. And I think I'll, I'll be okay. Or I am okay. I think, you know, with, with the other gigs that I've had, it's given me a strong amount of time to, to really think about how I use my time or I guess like what, what's going into what. So I, I feel like it's, it's something where, um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. You just look, you look and you see your reflection and you're like, who the, f- what the fuck are you doing? Like, this is, this is insane. What, what, what have you done? And then, you know, um, you just kind of walk yourself through it. And then, you know, again, to, to the other part of it where I, you know, if you have to have the inner dialogue or that sort of conversation with yourself that really forces you to ask, like, is this worth it? And the answer is, you know, if, the, if there's not really a hesitation, like, like to me, this is totally worth it still. You know, I, I get frustrated by, things frequently but like also you know i i've i get to meet a lot of interesting people um i get to do cool things people um have have allowed me to to be involved in in various ventures and just different activities that i you know i think are truly special and you know a lot, and really do enrich my life even if i'm you know sometimes struggling to figure out how to like you know, make, make sure that my bills are paid and make sure I'm taking care of myself and that I'm, I'm paying attention to the things that like ultimately an adult has to pay attention to. You know, I, I, I sometimes feel like I'm 16 and, and I'm, you know, I'm 31. That just, it just doesn't always compute. So you just, you know, you kind of have to take the best parts of kind of that, that youthful energy or kind of that, that pulse and, you know, temper them a little bit, you know, also kind of in the name of self-preservation because, you know, at a certain point, if you're just doing it how you've always been doing it, there's either no growth or, you know, you just end up flaming out. Yeah, definitely. Do you ever, have you ever heard um, a story that inspired you from someone that maybe walked, talked you off the ledge? Um, I guess... I mean, the, the one story that really, really got me was more so kind of in college. I was reading about Fonte from Little Brother. Um, he also is involved in a project called Foreign Exchange, which is one of my favorite projects from when I was in, in high school. And it's, you know, it's, it's still quite good. Um, and, you know, he was just saying how it was just kind of a, a thing where, you know, it's like you're you're jumping from vine to vine you know, trying to just keep, keep it rolling. And then at a certain point it just kind of catches and you go and, you know, but also prior to that, you know, you just want to quit, you know, there's days where you're just like, we just want to throw it all away, but that, you know, you hit a roll and, 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 you know, that's, that, that can be really helpful. And I, you know, I think hearing that at a time where I was 
feeling truly frustrated and kind of stifled in terms of what I was trying to do, like an emphasis on trying. Cause uh, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty rough in, in the early offings of me trying to make records and kind of, I guess, present myself as this thing. You know, I, I needed a lot of seasoning. I needed a lot of mentorship and luckily there were people that wanted to give it to me and, and felt confident enough to give it to me, you know, because at the end of the day, it's, it's, involvement in culture it's involvement in people it's it's people you know if you look take take it to the most i guess serious degree of it all you know it's people's reputations if they're you know willing to put their name on something with you you know that's a big deal so um you know it it took me a long time i think to to get to a point where i I think i think that paid off (laughs) but you know i got there and that feels pretty good Yeah, it's, I feel like it's nice hearing um, stories, especially from people who are more seasoned and like they've been through it and stuff and, and kind of getting some encouragement from them. Totally. It's it's, it's helpful. So how do, how does your family um, handle you doing this whole thing? Uh, I mean, you know, we have earnest conversations about what's going on. You know, my mother was involved in music. She was in a band. My dad, um, you know, he's a poet and a writer and, you know, he worked in, in, uh, newspapers and um, you know so they come from a background of like the arts and a, an appreciation for music and and you know I was exposed to a lot of different things that were were I mean in hindsight really special and really wonderful and you know even if I didn't totally appreciate it you know now I'm just like thank god you know that was that was really cool um that they they made a point to do that you know I, I you know it, it is I, in my mind kind of a really great example kind of of how to be a parent in that sense of like giving your kids something because I know that I know that doesn't always happen so um you know I think there's there's definitely support in the sense of like they're not saying like yo you're fucking up like you know get a get a job get a haircut trim the beard you know it's time to go work a nine to five but you know there I think this has been a decade almost now of me doing this and um yeah I I think things have moved in a really wonderful way and, and I'm grateful. And I think, you know, my goal moving forward for the next decade of me doing this is, is to hopefully move with a bit more intentionality and a bit more planning and a bit more impact and emphasis on, on, on what I'm putting into, you know, the, the art and all that. And so I think, you know, to bring it back to how my family feels about it, I think it's, it's letting them know that I'm taking this as seriously as I need to take it just because, you know, yeah, it is fun, but, but man, again, like I, 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 I feel strongly in my ability to, you know, make records, to perform those records, to connect with people. And I think, you know, I'm on my way in certain respects and I think to cultivating a following for what I do, but, um, obviously that's a long road and, you know, a lot of things could happen. I, I'm, I'm one of the last of a certain era of Chicago artists, um, that's, I guess, kind of moving at a certain level or kind of, I guess, like, being able to do what I do. And I'm really, you know, I, I don't take that for granted. And I think a lot of it is, you know, people just either choose to move differently where they still have careers in music, but it's on their terms. And, you know, they're not trying to be Mr. I'm here to tour or, or whatever. You know, they just want to release music and play shows when they can. And that's fucking awesome. That's like, I, I sometimes wish that <laughs> that was me. And who knows, as I get older and, and my roots get even more uh, dug down deep here in, in my home here in Chicago, uh, you know, that might be more the play than, than me kind of like bouncing around. But un- until that point, I think it's, it's definitely something where, um, you know, I have to, to do what I have to do in terms of showing myself and showcasing my talent. I mean, if, if not me, then who, um, and you know, you just never know who you meet along the way. There's all sorts of chance encounters or, you know, people who, you know, will make it sweeter for you the next time you you go to where you're going. And, um, you know, that's always appreciated. I mean, a, a great example, I, I played a show in Pittsburgh in May and it was crazy because it was a year to the day that I'd played the year prior and that show, um, you know, it just wasn't amazing. I mean, you know, much love to the people that, that had us, but it, you know, it was a rainy, rainy day, uh, rainy weekday in Pittsburgh, who the hell would want to go out? You know, it's, it's tough, but there was a handful of people that did show up. Um, you know, like this, this, uh, this friend of mine, Mars Jackson is an artist out there. Like he came 
And, you know, it was just like, he couldn't even stay for the show, but he like bought my merch, like gave me a t-shirt, one of his t-shirts and a vinyl and was like, yo man, I'll see you. And so I was like, oh, cool. Awesome. And then like our mutual friend moved back to Pittsburgh and then he was like, I want to start throwing shows, especially from when his time was, when he was living in Chicago, he, you know, would, he was really wanted to start bringing us out to his hometown because he, he knew he could facilitate that. And so like a year to the day we're doing, we're doing a show in Pittsburgh and it's like packed out and it's a totally different vibe. And I'm just thinking I couldn't stop smiling. I'm like, all I have to do is enjoy myself and sing my shit and you know if they don't like it cool but at least i have people to do it for this is great i love it and um you know one of the people in, in the audience was was a, you know an, uh, the owner and the guy who runs kind of like a you know a really good larger venue in in the town so i'm gonna that's where i'm playing when i go there next week you know so it's 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 you know it's something where you just you 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 don't know who's gonna be there and you know especially in smaller cities there aren't as many people doing you know, the, the venue stuff or, you know, even the arts. So it's kind of, I think, easier to make contact once you know who to look up. Um, you know, obviously, you know, not everyone wants to, to work with you and, you know, that's totally fine. You know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a hundred percent all the time anyway. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something where I, I, I feel like, um, you know, you just got to keep going back and, and trusting and, and, and putting faith that, that the people throwing the shows are, are going to, you know, put some people out there. Hopefully the people that were there last time, you know, they're like, oh shit, you know, this is great. You know, can't wait to see you again. You know, that's why it's important to have merch and, and to have new material to, to show them too, because I mean, you know, they, you know, if you have the same show each time out, that's not that much fun. I don't, I don't want to do that. Forget that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's cool that sometimes when you feel like things aren't working out, um, something always does, right? Like something comes from it. It's just like a stepping stone. Totally. Um, so I'm I'm looking at your rings. They just popped up in the camera right now. Um, and actually that's something I vividly remember from, uh, you You did a show at Shubas, I think. Was that in 2016? Mm, no, it was, it was like 20. 13 or was it in the winter i think so no that was 2016 well that was 2016 the the only other time i played shubas before 2016 was uh in 2011 maybe Um, you were just there that's maybe it was after maybe it was just after north coast that could have oh was that uh prob causes show did i oh yeah yeah i did a song with him yeah that's right Oh, okay yeah that was was. that was uh yeah that was with midwest hype and uh and him i think Yes. And I just remember seeing your rings. So what's up with your rings? Uh, I picked them up from traveling. Uh, I remember six years ago, I was in Los Angeles and I got the first one. And that one has, it was, it was so cheap and so poorly made that like the metal warped. So at a certain point to get it off, I'd have to corkscrew it off my finger. And it was like cutting into my hand and I'm like, all right, you're done. I'm sorry. It's been a good run. Um, so that, that one's gone. Then like the next month I, and my friend gave me like a really nice ring. She gave me like a, like a very nice ring. It was a very nice gift of hers. And, you know, that was like the Chicago ring. So we have, you know, we have the um, the Los Angeles ring and the Chicago ring. And then, then the next, uh, the next month I'm down in Texas and um, I'm at South by Southwest and my buddy finds a ring on the ground and it's okay, there's the Austin ring. And then it just, it kind of snowballed from there. And, um, you know, when I was, when I was kind of getting going, moving, moving around places, especially around then, um, it was just really helpful if you're waking up in a place you didn't know or weren't totally, cause you know, you, you go to places at night, you don't totally recognize the surroundings. You might be fucked up or like, you know, tired or whatever. And like, um, so it was a really easy way to orient myself. It was just kind of like to look at my hands and you know, see the story told by like where these rings were from and all that. And, you know, I know that sounds kind of silly. My, my folks were kind of like giving me shit. They're like, huh, that's a thing. And I was like, well, this is why mental, my, my mental health. And also, you know, I, I earned it. Um, <laughs> that's so but, cool. Uh, it's like, you're taking little tokens from everywhere you go. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, or the big, the big pieces. Totally. And, you know, things shift. I, I've generally kept uh, roughly the same rotation it just sucks because like I, I've had a couple that I've lost and then my favorite one broke 
just I, I could fix it, but I felt like it was it would just be be disrespecting the the, the energy of that moment because it was during the the final uh hip hop showcase that I was throwing all smiles and as soon as I got off stage I went to shake a hand and it broke and I'm like that's a sign I you know I think I think this one this one's time is done I could fix it but it wouldn't be the same and so this one is naked as shit I'm hoping I find like a replacement I have I have a ring I guess that I could wear for it we'll see but I I'm, I'm kind of I kind of would like to get a new one <laughs> Oh, well, maybe you'll you'll go somewhere and someone will just serendipitously pop up into it. It'll be like the movie Holes. It'll just fall into my hands. I'm like, oh, my God, you know, it's a ring. And then I get arrested and then I'm, I'm in a work camp in Ohio digging uh, holes. Yeah, or like out in Arizona. I heard there's this place called Tent City. Yeah, that's where the fucking asshole... Sheriff Joe or Pio, whatever the fuck, has the yeah. guys wear pink and like sleep in tents. And yeah, that guy sucks. Yeah, hopefully fuck you don't him. end up there. No. <laughs> no, you won't. But oh, that's so cool. I think it's so neat um, that 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 your rings have a story. I just knew it. I mean, I knew mm -hmm. it because from they just they, they caught my eye for sure. Def they're definitely there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So what um what's something else that you do to stay grounded? Because I know life can get hectic and with all the traveling and stuff. Um, I mean, I have a fantastic partner. She's the best. We have two amazing cats. They're great. You know, that's it's like I think developing a really strong like home space and kind of like feeling grounded in that sense has been really helpful. So, you know, I I at least have like a realm where I can like for the most part feel pretty chill. Um, so, you know, that, that's really useful. I think being able to, to call people and talk to people, I like to talk things out and I have some very patient people in my life that are willing to do that with me. And like I do for them, you know, so it's, it's not a total uh, one sided sort of, of, of favor. You know, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm available to, to anyone I love to, you know, if they if they want to talk about it, I'm willing I'm willing to do it um, just because I, I care about a lot of people. But, um, yeah, I, I think, you know, th those sorts of things can be really helpful. Uh, you know, I, I for better or for us, like I, I really fuck with food. Good food's great. It's it's such an Achilles heel. I got to like eat better and take better care of myself. But also, you know, it's 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 something that makes life enjoyable for me. And, uh, you know, and I'm I'm thankful to just know a bunch of people in that community increasingly just like lately i just have just met or gotten reacquainted with or you know been asked by folks kind of in that world to kind of you know come and enjoy their shit you know because i i've kind of i think cultivated a bit of a reputation as someone who likes food likes to talk about it and and champion things i like and you know it's not it's not to go full action bronson or anything on it but um you know it's definitely it's definitely a, a way to to share with people, you know, sharing excitement or, or mutual hatred and, and distrust of, of certain establishments. Um, you know, it, it, it goes all over the place. That's so fun. Yeah. So did you always, were you always a good listener? In life? Yeah. I mean, because you no. said that, that, that people, you talk, no. you let people talk to you and stuff. So when, how did that change? Um, okay. I mean, I don't know. I, I think I, I didn't have like a large number of friends as a kid. And so at a certain point, I I kind of evolved and, and really made a point to be extroverted and to really, you know, get out and see, you know, who's out there. The, you know, the people that were immediately around me, I, there was, I, I just didn't feel like there was like a lot of like love lost really. And, you know, I mean, there were certain people that were pretty okay. And I, I had some friends, but it wasn't, I, I know I wasn't feeling like a, a crazy bond. Like, you know, you just, you'd see people that were just super tight with one another. And you're like, damn, that's crazy. And like, and I, I had some really good friends. Don't get me wrong. It's just like the immediate day to day shit. I didn't like necessarily go to school with them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think, you know, in the period of, of kind of becoming, more outgoing, you know, you, you definitely just, you just, I just met a lot of people, started conversations with a lot of people. I, 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 uh, I think, you know, you don't always make wise decisions and kind of those friendships that you may build or kind of the, the, 
the, you know, the people that you choose to acquaint yourself with and, you know, kind of see what they're about. You know, there, there is such a thing as a wrong adventure. There are people put in your life to show you what not to do. And I think that's, that's good. Um, you know, but I, I feel like in terms of the, the exchange of getting to know somebody and, and really, really build, I mean, you know, that, that I think was coming, especially like with musical friends, because there was like a mutual desire and drive for it. And you have to be good at communicating when you're working with other people. And, you know, I, I've definitely fucked up before and, and not been clear when I needed to be, or, you know, then maybe not handled things as, as upfront as I should have, especially when I was younger. Cause you know, you're figuring out things. You don't, you don't necessarily want to piss people off. So I, I think now I, I try to, you know, give people their space, their birth, their voice. And then, you know, um, it's, it's something where, you know, I, I think especially now that the conversations, uh, regarding, you know, especially like involvement in hip hop or kind of like art, art that's made by people of color, people that, that, you know, aren't definitely not white, but then, you know, people like that look like me go and they take these, these genres and they, they become fabulously wealthy off of like other people's designs and shit. You know, I, I'm just, I, I, I really try to be careful. Cause you know, I, I, I fully know that like, this is what I want to make. I really like making it, but I also know that there's, there's certain stumbling blocks in place for, for the originators or for the people that are, I think really starting the trends on this shit. So I, you know, I, I, I try to think about how I fill the space or how I, how I am trying not to take up too much room, you know, just so that other people who, who deserve it can get it. And that's also where, you know, someone like myself might also come in though on being able to hopefully make more room for them. You know, if I'm able to forge relationships and kind of, you know, in, in whatever way, put someone on or like try to connect them just so that they can elevate what they're doing. And, you know, it, it's not always welcome and it's not always asked for. And, you know, so I, I think it's something I think I, I, in, when I was younger, I think I was more go, go, go. And it just doesn't always work like that. People kind of work at their own pace. And so I, I think learning to be more patient to get the most out of, um, you know, what you're doing when you introduce somebody to hopefully really help create something for other people. But, you know, a lot of it is, is kind of, you know, having to hear what they want and, you know, or, or maybe they don't know what they want and maybe you, you hear what they're saying and maybe try to like say back to them something that clicks for them that allows them to kind of take that next step towards kind of doing what they want to accomplish. Yeah. And so that, that's actually something I really needed to hear. So thank you. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. But my last question, um, because we're almost out of time. Mm. Is, I know. Mm. Okay. What would 31 year old Rich Jones tell 21 year old Rich Jones? I would tell 21 year old Rich Jones. Man, that's tough. I don't know. I, I think things, things have worked out. Okay. I think the, the, the best advice that people give you the real good shit doesn't necessarily hit you until maybe even years after the fact. So I mean, whatever I tell 21 year old me who fucking knows if they listen, I, I think like, I'm really grateful that it's been kind of a longer route to do the things I want to do just because, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes growth and work that, that occurred, you know, in a way that I think allows me to be, I think the best possible me as a performer and also as, uh, you know, a, a person, um, you know, versus I think, I know I've, I've, for, you know, you, you, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, someone gets big or blows up or whatever. And then like, depending on like how big, you know, they kind of remain that age forever. Um, you know, and it's, and I think there, there's some, there's some truth to that. I've seen, I've seen a little bit of that in some folks and, um, I, I guess I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, in my pursuit of my art, I feel like I'm, I've finally become, a much more mature person than what I started. So, you know, at 21, we kind of do, do your thing. I think, you know, maybe, maybe think about the birth that you create around your actions or how you're, what you're doing, you know, and, and, you know, ultimately even, even while thinking about that or considering that, I, I would just say, lo love you some you. I, I think it's taken me a long time to even get in, in the kind of the, the zone of, of really trying to like who I am and, and be, 
be happy and, and celebratory of the things that I, I like or the things that I, you know, I'm doing. Um, just because I, I think there's, there's, you know, they, I, I say all this, but it, it's, it's things you have to remind yourself. Cause I, I, I'm super self-critical and, you know, I, I, I think that can really hurt my ability to execute as best as I could. So I think I'm, I'm trying to, to, to toss in some relaxation kind of things or kind of some, like some sort of level where it's like, Hey, these things you did do well, like, this is a thing good for you. You know, like self-encouragement as much as self-criticism, um, you know, while also still trying to hold yourself accountable and, and not kind of fall into a space where what's happening is mediocre. I mean, it's, it's not to give yourself a pass. It's to, to know when you need a second to just fucking, just curl up in a ball <laughs> or, you know, maybe take the day and go see a friend or make a phone call or, you know, make a nice meal. I don't know. L little tiny things to just, I guess, get through. And then hopefully whatever you're feeling is passed and, and hasn't, you know, smothered you too much. Um, but Give yourself yeah, some grace. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, and it's, it's really tough. There's a lot of stimulation in, in the year of our Lord, 2019. Uh, you know, it's easy to feel inadequate and not in the loop and not part of the pack of, of people that are moving onward and upward. And, um, you know, I think the, the truth of the matter is, especially with, with so much of our, our relationship to people's art and what they're doing, being through digital means, you don't see the behind the scenes part of it. You don't, you don't see the facade and a lot of it is facade and posturing, you know, you could even argue, you know, I'm just as guilty. Cause guess what? I probably am just as guilty. You know, people, people perceive, you know, you where you're at, um, and it, it, in my experiences is often far removed from, from where you might feel you're at, you know what I mean? Um, but again, in those moments that that's where it might be important to think about, you know, what have I actually accomplished? Because, you know, it, 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 that's, if that's part of your record, you know, that's real. And, you know, I, luckily I've been able to do, do things that truly, uh, I don't know. I, I think about it. I'm like, I can't, I kind of can't believe I did that. That's really cool. You know, I, I, you know, there are people that I, I looked up to that, that didn't accomplish some of these things there, you know, that were in my mind way doper than me, you know, and, and, you know, but part of me, part of that is understanding maybe why that was. And, you know, kind of thinking about how, you know, forget talking to 21 year old me, I'm trying to talk to like 21 year old other kid <laughs> just yeah. because you know they're you know and, and luckily there you know there are some some really awesome artists i've been kind of hanging with and, and chatting with and um you know I, it's been really cool to to feel well received and appreciated for my perspective and what i've done and you know i but i, I go to great pains to not you know proselytize or like you know say what i say is is mandate you know it's it's more you know like you know suggestions you know get yeah, coming from a your place experience. of love yeah exactly yeah 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 exactly yeah i love that yeah and it's it's sometimes you're so caught up in where you, where you're going that you just forget to see how far you've come exactly yeah. yeah i love that oh well thank you so much for chatting with me this was a great conversation it was so nice catching up with you yeah it was wonderful have a great yeah. rest of your night bye Here are some key takeaways from my conversation with Rich Jones. One, building and cultivating relationships happens naturally when you put yourself out there. And the internet is a great tool for staying in touch when you can't be there in person. So don't forget about the people you meet along the way. In addition to emotional benefits that come with friendships, they can help you save on lodging or to fill some venues when you least expect it. Two, once you have a good library of work, Spend time on figuring out how to promote it. Think about different ways to get people to interact with you and your art outside of only releasing music. Create excitement about what you're doing. Three, when you get frustrated, ask yourself if it's worth it. If the answer is yes, don't lose sight of the positive things your career brings you. Four, you don't know who you'll run into. And in smaller cities, a small sparse show can turn into a return trip with a sold out crowd. 
Sometimes, when you feel like things aren't working out, those situations are simply stepping stones for something bigger. Five, there's a lot of growth that needs to happen in order to grow into your own artist and person. Do your thing and love you some you. Try to like who you are and be happy and celebratory of the things that you like and of who you are. Self-encouragement is just as important as constructive criticism, so recognize and respect your accomplishments. Thank you so much for joining us on the Tour Life Podcast. Be sure to give Rich a follow on Instagram at richjones underscore music, and don't forget to subscribe, leave a review on iTunes, and to follow the Tour Life on Instagram at the Tour Life Podcast.